All right, it's Goose and Matt, and we're going on an impromptu record adventure. He's focused on the road, I'm focused on telling you what we're doing. We're supposed to be at the shop, but we're not, and that is because we got a tip from a customer that came in that was driving up from Salt Lake City up to Seattle to pick up a really badass turntable, and we heard that there was a bookstore about four hours outside of Portland that had thousands of records they just put out recently so we're like okay we're just gonna go check it out he found some records there that were extremely rare for very good prices so we're gonna go see what we can find but while we're there we're also gonna be hitting up two other awesome record stores I've heard amazing things about Adventure Underground and Hot Poop maybe the weirdest record store name of all time uh, a couple other uh, you know, uh, thrift stores and whatnot. And we also have a few collections in Flux that I've been talking to via people on Reddit and Craigslist. Let's see where this goes. Reminder, there are still five days left to pre-order TMR18 and we still need 75 orders. Please consider clicking the link in the description, listening and ordering one. It's a beautiful indie pop record with guy girl harmonies and tons of eclectic instrumentation that deserves the wax treatment. Thank you. It's always cool to hit the road and look for records because you really don't know what you're gonna find. There's a lot of interesting smaller towns in Oregon and Washington, so let's go check them out. The Old Trunk was an antique store that I found and I saw there were records on Yelp, so I decided to look and there were a lot of records, as you can see. The prices were pretty high, not crazy high, but you're not gonna find any great deals. All right, we are in Hood River. We have been going to various thrift and vintage stores and we are being sent on a wild goose chase every store leads us to another store telling us there's great records there you got to check out that store so far no good but like any good treasure map it is about the journey and then the destination i don't know if that made sense precious drab is a great little vintage store right in hood river i love talking to the owners of the shop they were super cool super sweet and they had an amazing selection of records i mean some really unique stuff that you almost never see at stores at least the ones i go to their wall records were also super cool too out of my budget but if you're a collector this is a spot for you and then we finally made it to the archives the used bookstore that also happened to have thousands and thousands and thousands of records in the back matt and i dug for literally two plus hours maybe even closer to three and we unearthed maybe 120 great records for the shop a couple for ourselves a massive dig a lot of stuff in there that's going to be kind of dollar bin stuff but if you dig you'll find some gems without a doubt and this is truly what it means to be a digger you will go in here and never know what you'll find and then we found ourselves at hot poop now I have a lot of thoughts about this shop. This is one of the more interesting and unique stores I've ever been to in my life. Uh, and it's not just because of the stock they have, it's because of the pricing philosophy. I've never been so flabbergasted walking around a shop and looking at every single record and every price seemed to be, to me, four to five times the price that it should go for in my mind. Especially owning a record store, I was a little blown away at the fact that the average record price in the shop was $50. And I'm not talking about a wall record, I'm talking about in the bins. Many, many were closer to 100, and this was across the board with just total impunity. It is such a massive store with so many CDs, records, memorabilia. I just don't understand how it's in business. I mean, this kind of sums it up for me right here. All right, so I couldn't film the entire trip because, you know, when you're at a collection trying to negotiate, it's not great to whip out a camera and start taking footage. Uh, the process takes long enough as is, and I wanted to kind of make them speedy because we had a lot of stops along the way. Uh, but I wanted to do a post-mortem with you guys, kind of talking about our little record road trip as a whole and showing you some of my favorite finds from the road trip. So it was a huge success. I mean, we went all the way over to La Grande, we went up to Walla Walla, we went to Kennewick, we were kind of hanging out in the Tri-Cities, going to various collections, and we purchased three collections of records, vastly different collections. Um, one of them was a subset of someone's collection that has some pretty unique things. Another one was a collection of uh, some guy's brother who he just had all the records and he just wanted to get rid of them, but he knew he didn't want to just give them away, so we had to kind of figure out what made sense with that. Another collection was from a really nice gentleman who 
was just getting out of the vinyl game. He has an amazing ear, he's a tube tester, and a lot of his records are reflecting that mentality. So they're all really high quality, really near mint with MoFi sleeves. Uh, that one was about 220 records, and it's a ton of killer stuff. A lot of great 90s and 2000s alt rock. I mean, a lot of Sonic Youth. Um, a lot of great kind of like audiophile Sabbath reissues. Some really, really cool stuff in there. And um, very stoked on that one in particular. But we also had a really unique thing uh, in that we got this. So this bespoke custom trunk was from a radio DJ from the 60s who had 1,700 seven inch records in this trunk that he had made for them. Uh, it, just a crazy, crazy amount of music. I mean, to be fair, it is not the seven inches I was hoping for in the sense of being like Velvet Underground or, you know, some of that Northern Soul or, um, although there might be a little bit of that in there, but none of those like really obscure funk records that are gonna go for like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. But there's a lot of really interesting things in here. A lot of early groups and doo-wop stuff, including a lot of doo-wop that only had maybe one vinyl pressing of one seven inch because the band never made it big, but now has a bit of a cult following or now is kind of desirable and hard to find. So that's super cool. Uh, as we're going through these seven inches, we're kind of finding some ones that have a little more value, which is awesome amongst the ones that are just worth a dollar. But there's some picture sleeves, a lot of them without picture sleeves. I think this was a good buy because our seven inch section right here is kind of paltry and now we have enough to last us for a very long time. So gonna be a while to get through all of those. Um, I'll probably post some fun ones as I find them on my Instagram. But yeah, this trip was really fun. Two days, nonstop, hit up a ton of interesting and and fun record stores. Um, the last one I didn't get to talk about uh, with footage was called Adventure Underground and uh, it's in Washington. It was cool. It was like a, almost like a half price books, the vibe of it, but um, obviously less chainy. Um, they had a bunch of really good kind of like board games and books and comics and figurines. And in the back, they had a room dedicated to vinyl. And I had heard from my friend, uh, who was my unoriginal vinyl. Uh, some of you know him probably if you're in the uh, emo or hardcore scene. Uh, he does a lot of uh, design work for a lot of those reissues. But um, he told me it was one of his favorite digs in the US. And I went, I don't know if I fully agree. I found a, a couple cool things, but nothing really mind blowing. Um, maybe it was better pre-pandemic, I'm not sure. But overall, we came back with a thousand LP. 1707 inches and we have a lot of incredible things to be putting out over the next couple months which is awesome that was the goal so i'm going to show you just a few of my favorite things i found not all of it's crazy rare but some of it's just pretty cool so uh, let's just get into this and then uh, we'll end the video a really nice early mono pressing not a first but early mono of pet sounds you'd never see one with the jacket this nice especially from this era i haven't done the research to figure out exactly what pressing it is but still very cool mogwai happy songs for happy people one of my favorite of their records one you just don't see every day at least i certainly don't um, haven't had much Mogwai in the shop. We had a Hawk is Howling come in the store not that long ago, but I always love this one. I love the shiny cover. This is a Nirvana bootleg I have to look more into. This is Hormoning by Nirvana. Um, the songs are Turnaround, Aneurysm, and then D7, and then Son of a Gun, Even in His Youth, and Molly's Lips. So pretty cool array of songs. Um, I don't know much about this bootleg. Uh, this could be very valuable, this could be not that valuable. I don't know, but just cool, I've never seen it. This Sleep Dope Smoker is cool because the variant just kicks ass. I don't know if this is one of the rarer variants or not, but it's just such a, such a cool looking record. I don't know, I just liked it when I looked at it. Um, I also, you know, we had a, a Dope Smoker a while ago and then we had a picture disc for a while. I always like getting the actual record in because it has this like really nice kind of thick gatefold and they do the spot gloss on it. Just a really nice job, but you know, this album deserves better than a picture disc. How about a half speed mastered Boston self-titled? This is super cool. Um, excited to hear how this stacks up to the Friday music reissue, um, which I have right now as my personal record for this, um, one of my favorite records. So excited to hear this. Here's a fun bootleg, Jimi Hendrix live at the LA Forum, 42570. Really great track list. I mean, this track list is just stellar. Have not listened to this or cleaned this yet, so it could sound like garbage because a lot of these uh, bootlegs really are hit or miss sound quality wise, but always nice to find an older boot. Um, you know, these are getting harder and harder to come by. So excited to uh, give it a listen. This is an earlier pressing of the Stooges Funhouse. I don't think it's a first, but it's definitely of the era, which is cool. We haven't had any of these um, in yet. Maybe a reissue a couple months ago, but never one from the era, so that's cool. Against Me, White Crosses. This is like the massive triple LP. I love this record. I saw this band around the time the album came out and God, they're so good. Um, 
I caught the drumstick from the drummer and then I lost it in a move. So that's a bummer. Uh, oddly enough, the guy whose collection I bought this from, I told him that story when I was boxing this one up and he goes, I caught the drumstick from the drummer. So he ran into his room and he grabbed the drumstick, which I, th I thought was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I actually might take this one home. I don't know, I love this record, I don't own it, but um, yeah, we'll see. Failure Fantastic Planet Live, signed by the band. I don't know if they're all signed by the band or not, but this is really cool. Um, excited to give this a listen. I really enjoy Fantastic Planet. I've never heard the live album, but this is not an easy one to come by. And then two of the biggest finds, I think, or two of my favorite or rarest or whatever it may be. Um, I'm actually gonna do this one first. So. We got another Smashing Pumpkins, folks. Smashing Pumpkins, Siamese Dream. And this one is Orange Wax. So as you all know, these, you know, the reissue is getting in and out of print with the kind of purpley foil jacket. This one and the purple one, a purple vinyl, uh, are getting harder and harder to find. So this was an awesome come up. I mean, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna price this one at, but it's not gonna be cheap. I'll tell you that much. And then finally, the probably rarest thing we found potentially is this Pink Floyd wish you were here, Half Speed Master promo. I mean, I went on Discogs and there was not even any, I think, for sale. And there were 700 wants and only a handful of haves. So this is crazy. I'm really excited to give this a degrit and a listen. Um, just to hear if it sounds amazing, because I love this record. Uh, I, have, again, have no idea how to price this. This is one of those ones that can be an insane price I can never fathom, or, you know, a couple hundred bucks. I don't know. Um, the sales history for the promo is few and far between, so I'm gonna have to think about this one a little more. But that's the job, right? So that was the little record road trip vlog. Hope you enjoyed uh, the footage out in the field and this little recap. Obviously, if we do more of these, which I hope to do, um, even though we just spent a fortune on records and we need to slow down and sell some of them first, uh, I hope to do more of them because it's fun and I enjoy doing it. And it's kind of like doing like a really, 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 really low budget version of No Skips. Um, which wouldn't that be fun if that came back in some way? I don't know. Maybe there's some conversations happening with some people to maybe bring it back. I don't know. If you watch this long, that's your little tease. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I am going to go home now because I've been in the store for eight hours and I'm tired, but also gonna have to edit this video so ah such is the life thank you guys for watching take it easy